So I'm here today with my friend, Shanae Yusefi, and she's going to show us one of her fun toys. What's your, what's this called? This is a food dehydrator. And you... Where did you get your food dehydrator? At a thrift store in 2005. So she's using her resources wisely. Yes. <laughs> So what, what do you use your food dehydrator for? Mainly for making fruit leather and dehydrating fruit. So what would you use your fruit leather and dehydrated fruit? Like you use on it every hikes, day in kicks? Oh. On hikes, on, on camping, backpacking. Uh, once you dehydrate it, you remove all the liquid, makes it a lot lighter, so it's less to carry. Ah, so how does this work? Well, you take out the trays, you go inside, you slice up fruit, um, and you lay it on the, you lay the fruit on there, you bring it in, and you close it, and you turn it on. Or... And you, then what does the machine do to the fruit? Well, it turns on vents, holes along the side, bring in air to help dehydrate it, and you can turn the temperature all the way up to 160 to help cook and dehydrate the, the fruit. We don't usually put it that high because you have to watch it really carefully. So we prefer to have it around a little bit lower so we can do it for a very long time, 12 hours usually. Okay. And so is that why you have it outside instead of in your house? Yes, one for room because it's a pretty big machine and we don't use it except for usually in the summer and the fall when fruit is, you know, ripe, ready to go. Um, and it makes things really humid and warm on the inside because you're dehumidifying the food, you are humidifying your house. Ah. Okay, so let's go inside and make our fruit leather. <laughs> okay, so what's the first step in making fruit leather? First step is washing and cutting up your fruit. You don't have to really cut it up in big, you know, small chunks, just big chunks. You can toss it in here, remove any pits or anything like that. You want to puree it so that you can then move on to the next step. Okay, so how long do you blender it for? You blend it until it becomes the consist consistency of baby food, nice and smooth. So when it's dehydrated, it has a nice smooth texture. Awesome. So what kind of fruits can you use? Pretty much anything, but remember the juicier the fruit, the longer it takes to dehydrate. So if you're using nectarines, mangoes, strawberries, peaches, um, they may take less time than, say, some juicier berries or grapes. And if you don't have access to fresh fruit, you can always use frozen fruit. Okay, so how do you clean your fruits and get them ready? Well, remove, well, rinse them off and remove any bad spots, anything like that. For strawberries, you want to go ahead and slice off the tops and then stick them in a bowl later for blending up. And for nectarines or other fruits like that, you wanna give them a quick rinse and slice them, remove any bad spots and slice them in half and remove any pits. Hold on. So like if that were a peach instead of a nectarine, how would you um, do with it. the skin? Uh, what is blanching? Blanching. <laughs> I would blanch the fruit, which means you take a pot of water and bring it up to a boil and you put said peach or um, any fruit that you want to, any pitted fruit that you want to remove the skin on and you put it in a pot of boiling water for about 45 seconds, give or take, to remove the skin on the fruit. If you, for example, peaches, if you don't want the fuzzy skin to be blended in with the fruit then you can do that. Oh, I remember doing that as a kid. We would do that to our tomatoes when we made spaghetti sauce. Exactly. 
So you just get them hot to get the skins off, not to cook yeah, the fruit. Exactly. That's why you only want to do it for about 45 seconds because you don't want to cook it. So obviously this is something a grown-up would do. Most definitely. Working with boiling hot water can be dangerous because you have to plop them in the water. Sometimes they splash. And then scooping them out, they're very hot. You have to cool off the fruit after you collect it in a pot. You put it in the sink, cool it off with hot water, and then the skin should come off easily. If it doesn't, go ahead and put it back in the pot for another 10 seconds, and that should do the trick. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so I filled up your blender almost to the top, but I know there's some air spaces, so it won't be over full. How long do we need to blender that for? It depends on the blender, but until it's nice and smooth texture. We'll probably do this one for about two minutes. Awesome. Okay, hold on. If it doesn't work because it's frozen too much, sometimes you have to let frozen fruit thaw a little bit or add a little bit of water. But any water you add, you are going to have to take back out. or stick it in the microwave for a few seconds and... So, we're now going to stick this in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had to... Wait, my finger was in the way. All right, so we microwaved the mango so it was softer and soupier. So now it should blender. Okay, so the next step, um, you're putting it in a pot on your stove. Uh -huh. And why are you doing that? Just remove any extra, height, you know, extra water or any extra juice. So you can start thickening it so it takes less time. And so you get a thicker fruit leather so it's not too thin. Okay, so now that you're um, putting it on the stove, you're adding what? Lemon juice and just a little bit of lemon juice and sugar. I like to do for one cup of puree fruit, I use an eighth of a cup of sugar and one teaspoon of lemon juice. If you want to use more or less, it just, whatever you prefer. Okay, but, and just to show, oh, yes. the flame is on really super low. Yeah. You're not like trying to boil or cook your- No, otherwise you have to continuously stir it or you might burn it. Okay. And uh, anything you add, spices or anything like that, once it's dehydrate, dehydrated, any the flavor is going to be amplified. So go light on the spices. Awesome. Thanks. All right. So we've got our our fruit on the stove. You've added your sugar and you've added your lemon juice. Mm -hmm. So. What does it look like when you first get started? So when you first get started, it should be pretty runny. Um, if you look, it's just running off the spoon. It's just... Pretty, pretty drippy. Pretty drippy. And then this is the mango we started earlier. It's cooling down now. It's a lot thicker. It's holding onto the spoon better. Once it cools off, we'll move to the next step. So it's almost like cream of wheat or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you don't have time to take it that far, that's fine. You just want it to be able to at least cling to the spoon so it's a thicker layer when we... And won't take as long to dry out. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. So do you have... So we turned up the heat, which is why we're stirring it constantly so it doesn't burn, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Awesome. So we're gonna get two more flavors started, our nectarine, and we're gonna experiment turning 
raisins into fruit leather with grape juice. Yes. So you can see the strawberries, all that smoke coming off is the moisture coming out of the strawberries. It's still pretty soupy. And you can see as the nectarines are coming out of that jar, they're already um, thicker. much thicker, just even to start. So that's the difference in your fruits. If you have very juicy fruits or even firmer fruits. And all that smoke is what you're trying to get out of your um, fruit. It's not actually smoke, it's actually moisture coming out of the fruit. All right, so since Girl Scouts are courageous, we're gonna experiment here. We're gonna take some raisins from Sunmade, our Sunmade raisins, and we're gonna take our juice that we have in our snack pack from Lion's Juice, and we've already put one in here already. We've got this other one ready to go in case we need more, and we're gonna try turning raisins into fruit leather because we figured rather than starting at grapes that are full of juice, even more so than strawberries, which the strawberries are still over there steaming, it's taking a very long time, yep. we would cut our time down by trying raisins. So go ahead and let's see if this works. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. It's very, very thick, like try tipping it over again. It doesn't even run. I don't think we even need to cook that. I think that's ready to put right on the tray. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so I know in jelly making, when you're cooking things, once it changes from that kind of solid, um, opaque sort of color to this almost darker translucent color, that that means you're getting close. Is that kind of the same with leather making? It's a good guess. I have no clue. <laughs> so you can tell we're getting closer because it's changing color. And it's, it's sticking to the spoon. Sticking to the spoon and it's getting almost a tiny bit, not exactly see-through, but a little translucent. All right, so I made this fruit leather last year and um, you have to be really careful when you're drying it that you don't dry it or have a high, too high of a temperature. Otherwise, it may taste a little burnt or it becomes brittle and cracks. You have to get just soft enough that it is flexible and leathery. However, you also have to be careful to get it completely cooked otherwise it could mold and won't last a whole year like this half this has so so it has to be completely dehydrated or the mold can set in yes and I will probably mention this later but when you think it's getting close turn off your take it out of the oven or Turn off your dehydrator, let your fruit leather completely draw, uh, cool off because then it will turn thicker. It will, it will harden up. So you, it, you, it cools you want it to be like almost too soft when you turn it off to let it cool. Just right, where there's no soft patches. So no liquidy patches. Like. Exactly, exactly. We'll show you when we get closer. It's hard to describe though. Okay. Yeah. Good. One other thing you want to watch out for is if you're doing more than one tray in a food dehydrator, it can actually dry one sheet towards the top. It will dry more quickly than the sheet on the bottom. So you have to watch out and make sure that it doesn't dry out too quickly 
and become brittle versus this one was more towards the bottom and it's much more flexible. Let's if see. you want a more even cooking, you can halfway through switch the trays on the top to the trays on the bottom. So that's how it's flexible and then if it gets too cooked, it's it's hard like that, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I can't even, yeah, you see how and it's you breaking? Can, you can kind of hear it cracking too. Yeah. You can even pull out, gosh, shards because it's, So then it almost you know, comes out like candy then instead of leather. Yeah, yeah, or just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, so I don't know if you have sensitive teeth, it may not be enjoyable to eat. If you want fruit leather, just watch it and make sure to turn it off a little bit early. If you're not sure, let it cool down, give it a wiggle, see if it's fully cooked and give it a tug, see if it needs longer, or a touch even, and you'll know. Try some of this. Well, the problem is you're not okay. going to be able to, Mary, because... I'm going to try some of this that you made a couple years ago. You're, you're not going to be able to because it's, it's so, on such thin saran wrap. You need to find... I picked some generic saran wrap, and it was way too thin. It's really hard to get the fruit off when you have such thin saran wrap. Let's go. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm gonna try, because Shanae makes the best fruit butter. Okay. And I'm stubborn, so I will get this off the skinny fruit butter. So it's very, very skinny. So once you can get it started, it's almost like, when, almost like tape. So I've got it started. What flavor is this one? Um, I think that's nectarine. From your trees outside. Uh huh. Awesome. Oh, look at that! Just like a regular fruit by the foot. Uh huh. Quite healthy. Healthier. Oh, got some plastic still on there. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We'll test it. Mmm. Delicious. So now you can see with the strawberries, it's almost right down to the bottom of the pot. It has reduced so much. It was like almost this high of the pot when it started. And then all that water came out of the, of the strawberries. And now it's just maybe, maybe an inch left on the bottom of the pot is our strawberry pulp. That's how much water came out of our strawberries. So since they were very, very juicy, we have a very little amount of um, strawberries left in the pot, where the nectarines weren't quite as juicy, and they're almost done, and they're still at least a good two inches, you can see on that spoon from that spot on the left-hand side, deep when, um, when it's dehydrating because it didn't have quite as much water to come out. And it's almost ready. It hasn't gotten to the gloppy stage yet, but it's getting very close. You want it to kind of, instead of having that drizzle, you want it to get to where it like glops into clumps. It's almost there. And you can see the strawberry it doesn't really drizzle it more like flops like clumps. It almost looks like ketchup. This is after we have finished thickening and then cooling all the fruit puree. We have poured it onto the screen wrap, but before we do that, we have lined it with saran wrap just because it makes it a lot easier to remove it. And then once it's dry, all you have to do is roll it up, slice it, and eat it. Okay, so how do we set up? Those look just like window screens. Is that essentially, essentially what they are? Yes, I have. I have uh, two different kinds. 
This is the original one it came with. And it is actually a window screen material. You can buy it off Lowe's. So and that one's metal. Uh-huh, yeah, they're, well, um, I think it's fiberglass. I think it's fiberglass. Yeah, fiberglass. And this uh, is one that we've made. Sometimes it comes undone and then you have to redo it. So since we bought this used, we had to redo it. So I like to use saran wrap, just to make sure it will less mess and it's easier to take care of. I like to spray it down first, nice, get the edges especially, before I lay down the saran wrap, just so it sticks and it doesn't get tangled up. And because I'm using stuff that isn't quite wide enough, I'm going to use two pieces. If you can tell, I like to make sure and that it's touching the metal edges because that's going to help it not get stuck to itself. Strand back is great. Moosh is going to do your dishes. Yes, he is. Moosh! Ah. And then once it's all nice and level, you go ahead and pour. If you think you have too much, see a little bit and kind of just spread it around. So you have... So do you want it to be like about a, as thick as a pencil or thinner? Thinner. thinner. Okay, the so... The thicker it is, the longer it takes to dry. And it's only drying from the top because... The saran wrap's the on the bottom. The saran wrap was on the bottom. So that's another reason why it might take longer than dried fruit to dry all the way. So... I mean... I'm terrible with measurements. I would say eighth of an inch. Okay, or, so or like less. as wide as the blade of your scissors, or thicker than that. Mm. Both blades of scissors. Ah, yes, one, one, one blade. One blade of scissors. One blade. So probably a sixteenth. And then. Depending on your consistency you of your puree, you can shake it, kind of get it to go all around. You see a few lumps, it's all right. It'll still taste great. Keep working it around or using a spatula or something just so you can get it to just the right thickness. And it depends how brave you are, you can try this too. Once you get it to the thickness you like, you kind of want to test it. If you can't see how thick it is, depending if you're doing a dark material or a light material you may or may not be able to see how uh, the screen underneath you can always test it with the thickness of your tool if you still see a few chunks that's okay it'll still taste great so you just want to try to get it as level as you can right uh-huh Make sure there's no shallow spots. It'll be fine, but uniformity is better. That way it will dry more even.
Okay, so you finished with the strawberry. Yes, and I realized uh, at first I was gonna put all of it on, but then I decided hold off and see how far I get. If you look, I can hold this sideways. Yes, it's, a, it's been thickened, but also there's very little movement because I have just the right amount on it. If you see some puddling in the middle, try to remove it, otherwise it's not gonna dry in the middle. It'll be too thick in those places where it moves, right? Exactly. The outside will become brittle and the inside will mold. Thank you. Uh-huh. So let's see your tray. That's the nectarine, right? Yep, nectarine. Raisin slash grape. Mm. Were you gonna put that one at the bottom? This is peach and strawberry. That's all I have. Mango. And there's one more strawberry. So for a closer look at the dehydrator, it has a nozzle that sets the temperature. It also sets the speed of the air. And you can see inside all those little holes on the um, ledges, that's where the air comes out and it will circulate through these trays to dry the fruit weather. Last one, strawberries. So what temperature and how long are you, do you need to leave the fruit leather in here, Shanae? Well, I would go around 120 and I would check it in, I'm not sure, about six hours and rotate if necessary and go from there. Awesome. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see our fruit leather tomorrow.